friends, welcome to week two of our series on Fruits of the Spirit. We're going to continue studying that passage in Galatians that you just heard read uh, as we go through one by one and look at what it may look like in our lives when the Holy Spirit is working deeply in us. When we are rooted in God, what does it look like to have God's love in our life? This week, what does it look like to have God's joy in our lives? So as we dive into joy, let's hear from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by God's great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay and through your faith God is protecting you by God's power until you receive the salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see so be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure tr many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ was revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. This is God's word for the people of God. Thank you, God. You rejoice, you rejoice with a glorious and inexpressible joy. Glorious and inexpressible joy. That sounds great. So before we start diving into the joy of having God in our lives, we have to first separate out joy and happiness because they're often come hand in hand, but they are very much two different things. Um, on the website Psychologies, basic psychology website. Here's how they describe it. Joy and happiness are wonderful feelings to experience, but are very different. Joy is more consistent and is cultivated internally. It comes when you make peace with who you are, why you are, and how you are. Whereas happiness tends to be externally triggered and is based on other people, things, places, thoughts, and events. Did you hear this? It's like they were listening to my sermon from last week. These fruits of the Spirit are based on being rooted deeply in God. Except instead of saying God, this is how they described it. It comes when you make peace with who you are, why you are, and how you are. Do you sense that deep rootedness? When we become aware of whose we are, of who we are in Christ, nothing can rob our joy from us. When we become deeply rooted in how and who we are in this world, and that includes the Holy Spirit working in our lives on a daily basis, nothing can rob our joy from us. But a lot of things can rob our happiness. I mean, you ruined my plans with bad weather. There goes my happiness. 
if I go to eat my last piece of chocolate and it's gone because someone else ate it. <sighs> there goes my happiness. When I had a really great show to watch and I watched six out of what I thought were eight seasons and I'm halfway through season six and I'm loving it and then I realized there were only six seasons and I didn't have another 20 hours to dive into this Netflix binge, that robbed my happiness. If people are mad at me, if I'm not having a good hair day, if my dog and my children take turns waking me up all night long, I'm not a happy person. There are so many things that can take away our happiness, lighthearted and heavy. But what we're talking about today is joy. This deep rooted thing, this positivity, this hope against all hope, this reason to smile that comes from knowing who you are, whose you are, and having the Holy Spirit deeply rooted in your life. You've met people like this, right? People who are just deeply filled with joy. They have a reason to smile on the best of days and on the worst of days. If you visit them on the hospital and they are in great amount of pain, there is still in them the sense of positivity, this unshakable joy that no amount of pain, no amount of hardship can take away. What a powerful thing. I recently uh, did a wedding for someone and describing the two people being married, I described one of them as being joyful. And so many times when we say that someone is joyful, especially in our jaded American culture, we like to think of it as a sign of weakness or uh, airheadedness, something not to be respected. But joy that is rooted in Christ is one of the most powerful gifts that a person can have. And if you're going to share life with someone, you want to share life with someone who has joy. Because what joy means is nothing life is going to throw at me can shake my understanding that I have hope in Christ that I have hope for tomorrow, that I have hope for today, that this life is worth living. Do you hear that? Do you hear how powerful that is? I get knocked down, but I get up again. Nothing in this world can take away your joy when it is rooted in Christ. And the strange little tension that joy can give us is this, you can be really unhappy and still have the joy of God in your life. How? I liken it to this. Um, I love my family. I love my friends. I love my church folks. But sometimes people may have heard me say this. I can love you, but I'm not always going to like you. Nothing can take away the love that I feel for the people that God has put in my life. It is an unshakable love. But sometimes people are more likable than others. Yeah. And I, you may find this really hard to believe, but sometimes I can be more or less likable depending on the day or the week or the year. Like depends on the moment, but love is unshakable. And I can deeply not like someone, but deeply love them at the same time. I mean, my dog is the perfect example. There are moments when she drives me crazy. Let's say she's waking me up for the second time in the night and I will look at her and go, I don't like you very much. But I would still defend her to the end because I love her. Well, that's the same thing with joy. If you have ever experienced the joy of God, you have experienced that moment when everything in life can be going wrong, when you are surrounded by chaos or depression or whatever else it is that is, you're struggling with, and still there is this light, this spark. And in 1 Peter, we're given a reason for this. And it's this, we live with great expectation 
we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay. This is a really fancy way of saying this. We have joy because no matter how bad this world gets, we are promised more. No matter how uh, hard it gets to be a human living on earth, it is okay because we are a child of the eternal God. And in heaven, we have a joy that can never be taken away. We are promised eternal life through Jesus Christ, and that can never be taken away by any form of cancer, any tornado that comes through town, any divorce, any difficult day, any depression, any addiction. None of those things can be taken away. Uh, none of those things can take away the hope we have in God. And that hope produces joy. So friends, as we look at our plant here, um, are you in a season when you need to practice joy in order to feed your roots in Christ? When you need to um, show gratitude every day, uh, keep a gratitude journal that feeds joy. Pray to God every day and thank God for the gifts of your life that feeds joy. Do we need to practice joy by speaking positivity into the people around us and to ourselves? Or do we have this joy of God? You realize, Jenny, you're describing a lot of the things I have experienced in this life. And you've experienced it, but you have failed to share it with other people. You have failed to share this good news that God has given you unshakable hope. And that produces just joy. Maybe it's easier just to be jaded or to complain. Maybe it's easier to just uh, let people associate you with your pain. But living out joy is living out the Holy Spirit, and it means you are a witness to the goodness of God. So friends, feed your roots. Produce this fruit and share it with others. This is a day for us to ask the Holy Spirit for an abundance of joy. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we do invite you into our hearts, and we invite you to deeply root us in you. Let us know who we are, whose we are. Let us know our place in this world through Jesus. And God, we ask you to teach us joy. Teach us how to find hope despite what anything that happens in our lives. God, show us how to share joy with one another. That we may know you through other people as well. Amen. Amen. We're going to respond now uh, by singing it together, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Um, number 374, read, sing verses 1 through 4. Stand up.